Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Now, the North-South divide in the People's Democratic Party, PDP, over zoning of the 2023 presidential ticket is widening. Presidential aspirant Aminu Tambuo, Sakoto State Governor, said that instead of talking about zoning, the party should give the ticket to the candidate that can win the election. But Southwest leaders of the main opposition at the meeting hosted in Ibado by the Oyo State Governor, Shei Makinde, insisted that the South should produce the presidential ticket. A leading light of the PDP in the zone attended the meeting. Now, their position is in sync with that of South South governors and leaders, which expressed uh, on Monday at their meeting in Uyo Diakoyabam State Capital. We are now being joined by Dino Demi. He is the Deputy Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. Good morning to you, Mr. Demi. Thanks for joining us on the breakfast this morning. Good morning, thank you. And I would like to correct the impression that I am the present Deputy National Public Secretary. I was. That means I a former Deputy National Public Secretary. So you're now the president, the present deputy national publicity secretary. Former. 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 Yes. All right. Thank you for that correction. Thank All right. You. All right. Let's talk about uh, you know what's happening in the PDP right now. There seems to be an ongoing uh, battle of the soul, as it were, for the People's Democratic Party. 2023 is just around the corner, and right now, the party is seemingly at a crossroad when it comes to. Who should be bearing the flag of the party, you know, for the presidential ticket? Should it be the North or should it be the South? So would you really say that uh, it's one uh, issue that might, you know, cause a whole lot of disharmony if it is not really put, you know, to order? It is not going to be an issue, really. Why not? This is the political season. This is the time for people to aspire. This is the time for competition. And it is the time for people to talk about zoning, where the president should come from. So it's a process. And we are going through the process gradually. So it's not a crisis. It's not an issue. It's a process that we end up or resolve somewhere very, very soon. When you say it is a process that will be um, resolved very soon, there's a whole lot of politicking going around, a lot of uh, people declaring their intention. A Tambua has uh, declared, and some people from the South South uh, you know, have also declared. Uh, but don't you really think it's actually like um, working uh, in cross purposes, really? Politics is a game, and it involves a lot of strategy. If you see OB attending the declaration of Atiku, and OB is also a candidate, an, uh, an aspirant, you should know that it's a game. So when politicians are playing their game, journalists should just continue to watch. And just like I said, by May 28th, when PDP will have its primary election, it's going to end somewhere. Okay, but um, Mr. Odeyemi, let's also look at the issue that's plaguing the country right now. And it's the fact that you have uh, a lot of agitation across. And this agitation is as a result of the fact that a lot of persons feel marginalized. And if there's marginalization, what would think that the 2023 elections, uh, you know, would correct all of the ills of the current, I mean, the, the current reality of our country. Uh, security concerns, the issue of marginalization, the reason that you have different persons saying we want to go our different ways. So don't you think that it would be fair for, for the sake of equity, fairness, justice that the PDP should zone the presidency, you know, to different zone, for instance, uh, the North Central, the North East and uh, um, the South East. Since 1999, people from uh, the North Central have not been elected as president. And you also, the same for the North uh, East, I mean the South East. Don't you think that it would be fair at this point in time, if the PDP would want to, you know, take over, wouldn't it be fair for, you know, at the party level, for persons in this region, uh, you know, to come out with candidates that could be allowed for consensus? I want to believe that uh, our problem in Nigeria is not even about where the presidency comes from. 
It is about the constitution we operate. It is about fragmentation here and there. And it is about the imbalances in the administration. And uh, if we put all this together, you will know that the presidency coming from anywhere does not signify failure. What it shows is that we need to, re to redefine ourselves in Nigeria and a lot of policies. Having said that, PDP is a political party that believes in social. And that is why about 31 people, each one from each state, each state have been selected to go and look at the formula that will ensure that PDP wins election in 2023. It is the, this committee, I think they were inaugurated yesterday, they will come back to the party to tell us where we should zone our presidency to and where we know we, are, we can win election. Not only that, it involves the personality too, because if we are putting anybody from any zone that is not known, that is not popular, that does not have a that if you check his background, uh, uh, if you conduct a kind of a background check on it, Nigerians will reject him at the poll. PDP will not feature such a person. So we are at the process of presenting somebody that we know that in 2023 we just want to win that election. So Sony is part of PDP, and for the mere fact that. Uh, the last uh, 16 years that PDP spent in office was majorly spent by people from the South, that is Obasanjo, uh, Jonathan. We are convenient, we are, it is easier for us to say, yes, we can pick from the North. And at the same time, we can say that if APC, because this thing involves a lot of strategy, if APC is speaking from the South, which obviously they have to do, what we are now saying is the best thing for us in PDP is to pick a capable person from the South too to match APC so that at the end of the day, we will know that Buhari has served eight years and it will be very wrong for PDP to go again to the North. So we have the two uh, issues. And by the special grace of God, it will be resolved by this committee that has been empowered to look at situation so that PDP can win election. All right, uh, Odemi, about uh, presidential aspirant, now Secretary of State Governor, uh, Aminu Tambua seems to believe that the issue should not really be about zoning, you know, that it should be about who can bring a victory to the party. I just want you to analyze that statement and uh, if that's uh, the, really the way forward, you know, for the People's Democratic Party. No, but um, just before, I mean, just before you react to that, I mean, let's be very fair. Uh, let's talk about, I, I mentioned the issue of fairness and equity. And uh, it's a good thing that you have mentioned the Constitution. But it feels like when it comes to a certain region, um, you know, the issue of the Constitution becomes very big. You have mentioned, you know, um, the South, but not necessarily the Southeast. And a lot of people are thinking that if the PDP would make any progress in 2023, they should think about zoning to the South is for the issue of, I mean, uh, fairness and equity. Yes, we understand that zoning has not been adopted into the Constitution. Some people have uh, described this as a gentleman agreement. And so how, how would you really, really describe this? Juxtaposing that with, you know, the concern that he's raised. In all this discussion, we have been talking about South. We have not mentioned or be specific about Southwest, Southeast, or South South. We have mentioned the Southeast. No, you are mentioning the Southeast. What I'm saying is, both the Southwest, the Southeast, and the South South. What they are still saying right now is that give us the presidency in the South. Once it gets to the South, we sort ourselves out within, obviously, Southwest is out of it. It's between South South and Southeast. So when we get to the bridge, we know how to cross it. So we are not foreclosing any region, at least southeast or south south. All we are saying is, give it to us in the south first. Then we know how to sort it. Then uh, reacting to your question, I can't remember the question again from uh, Justin. No, yes. I was, yeah, I was actually asking you to analyze and want a presidential aspirant, uh, Aminu Tambua. Oh, okay, top. okay, Tambua. Yeah. Yeah. Tambua is an aspirant. He's campaigning for himself and he's saying something that we favor him, that we make him to emerge as the presidential candidate of PDP. So, whatever he's saying is just to favor his side. And all what we are saying is yes, if we, if we are saying that we should win the election first, 
before we start talking about you know disputing the position. What, where is the logic? The only way to win to win the election is first agreeing that we are zoning into so so area and we are bringing out a candidate. Once we have not gotten to that stage, if you are now saying yes, I am the only one that can win the election for PDP, I think that is not too fair for other aspirants and other region. So what's the what's the fate of uh, some people who have, like uh, Mercy has mentioned, some people who have felt marginalized over time, who have not actually, you know, seen that glimpse of hope of um, getting, uh, you know, the presidential ticket, like uh, maybe uh, the North Central people from um, likes of um, Kogi State, from Benue State, and. Uh, you know, the likes who feel that um, over time they are part of the minority, would they actually be in full support of the PDP when eventually they uh, make, uh, you know, their issue of um, zoning, you know, open to members of the party? I don't want to preempt the 31 uh, leaders committee set up by PDP, you know, to look into all these issues. I'm sure there are experienced politicians, there are technocrats, and there are people who know the formula for us to win election in 2023. Of course, they will come up with their own recommendation, and the party has a system of looking at whatever is being is brought before it. It will be subjected to national executive council decision, which is going to be the final, uh, you know, going to pronounce uh, a final statement or the committee. So let's wait until they come up with their own uh, suggestions. And all what you are saying right now, that some regions have been marginalized, but I think we'll be taking into consideration. Okay, but, but let's, you know, begin to look at this now. Some people are saying that there might just be a problem if you have the APC, uh, you know, zoning it, you know, to the Southwest. Uh, it, it might just really be a problem for the PDP come 2023. How can it be a problem? As a matter of fact, we expect APC to bring their candidate from the Southwest. So it's not new to us. And don't forget, just like I said, we are also strategizing towards winning this election. Let them come up with their own candidate from the, from the Southwest. Then you will see PDP in action. So we are not afraid that it's, not, it's never a threat. So, but the, but, but the clamor. Are you praying that they should bring their candidate from the southwest? So, if the APC zones to the southwest and the PDP, uh, because you know the talk right now is still about the north, the north central, and what have you, uh, we really don't seem as much as you have stated that you, there might just be a zoning to the south, not necessarily uh, not knowing whether it's going to go to the southeast or it's going to go to the southwest, but the south really. So. If it gets to, you know, the APC for the Southwest and the PDP stays with the North, I mean, how, how does that really pan out for Nigerians? Nigerians will have to decide which candidate they want. That's the beauty of democracy. If, we, if PDP is presenting a candidate from the North and the APC decides to bring their own from the Southwest, of course, they have justification to bring from the Southwest because there is no way they can pick a candidate from the North again with Buhari spending almost 80 years in office now. So definitely they have to look towards the south. And if on our own, if on our own we feel that the best way to win this election or Nigeria does not because we don't have to follow the APC timetable or their own agenda. We don't have to look at their side. We are listening to Nigerians and we are watching what Nigeria wants. So that is the reason why we are saying that as far as PDB is concerned, we are free to choose from either the north or from the south. But we will do our own calculation very well, just because we want to win the election in 2023. All right. Since, since all um, indications uh, are hovering towards uh, the People's Democratic um, Party, you know, bringing its candidate from the South South, maybe South East or South South, South generally, maybe the South East or the South South, the question right now would be if um, there would be, you know, uh, a formidable. Uh, uh, person or candidate that can actually, you know, match um, the APC, you know, you know, uh, side by side, tofer to at the end of the day, because most people feel that uh, at the end of the day it is um, um, a battle between the People's Democratic Party and that of the All Progressive Congress APC. In PDP, 
we are blessed with eminent personalities, experienced politicians that can govern this country very well. We are not short of men capable to rule this country. And that is why, if you look at APC today, most of the leaders there left PDP to go to APC. So what we are saying is, as far as we are concerned, most of their leaders or people they rely on as capable of ruling this country or being their chairman or party leader migrated for PDP to APC. So we are not short of uh, good men in PDP. So let APC present anybody from the Southwest. We will present somebody that personally will have won election at least 50% by his personality and caliber. PDP will only need to campaign and work for the rest. Okay, there is also another trend of um, people uh, picking tickets or buying tickets uh, for candidates, and most times uh, they haven't uh, come all out by themselves uh, to say that they are the ones contesting, but other people have actually bought the forms for them. Uh, what does this really tell? Is it some sort of a gimmick or some sort of a cover-up? What does this really mean? It is one of the political gimmicks. It is one of the ways to tell whoever that you know they are being sponsored or the people want them. Even if they are the one giving out the money to buy the funds. So it is an old way politicians do, do uh, throw to the masses just to give the impression that they are the, 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 it is the people that want them to come and contest. But actually, who will come out to contest without having that personal interest? Nobody. You have the interest first, and what you do is now to strategize. It's now to strategize and ensure that at least you give the impression that you are wanted by the people. So, but, but, but I mean, just recently we have seen that uh, more persons are declaring and the likes of Peter Obi, former governor of Anambra State, has joined the presidential race under the People's Democratic Party. Uh, well, I'd like to share your thoughts on that. Also, moving forward, um, some people are, are thinking that it would be time that uh, you, you have, of course, you look at him from coming from the southeast, and some people would think that it would be time that, you know, the party should throw weight around any candidate against the southeast. But, of course, it's the party. They have their structure. They have, you know, whatever the, their decisions that would always be their own decision. Uh, but do you think he stands the chance against the likes of a Tiku, Tamberwall, and others? Peter Obi, like other aspirants, is very formidable, is likable, and is somebody that has ideas. He's coming into the race is a very good development, and uh, you know many of us have applauded it. The more, the merrier. Let all of them come out so that we will have the opportunity of choosing which among them is the best, you know, to be given the flag, the flag. Once we do that, it is part of our thoughts that in PDP in 2023, we want to, do, to win this election. And whoever we are putting forward as our flag bearer must be accepted, must be competent, and must be willing to serve the country of which Peter will be represents, just like any other, any other aspirant. So the more the merrier. Don't be surprised. Many people will still obtain form. But at the end of the day, the mm. party will decide, the delegates will decide. And but, the but, latest but, time, mm. in May 28. But, but let me put it directly to you now. Um, let's just put it directly the way it is. He's from the, uh, you know, the Southeast. And that's it. And there's been a lot of clamor that, you know, there should be some level of consensus, even though you say that uh, the PDP is known for zoning. Uh, zoning could also be zoned and everyone could agree, you know, to zone it to the South is. And you have mentioned that he's not a bad candidate whatsoever. Don't you think that uh, the PDP should be tilting towards having all of this weight thrown around um, this particular candidate? I'm just saying, I'm just asking. When you talk of PDP, PDP is not an individual, you know, that can say, okay, all of you go there. No. And that is why in PDP, our motto is, power belongs to the people. At this special stage, power belongs to the delegates. It is the delegates that we choose 
who is going to be the flag bearer of the party. And what I'm saying in essence is the delegates themselves are not dummies. They know what is good for Nigeria. They know what is good for the party. They know who the party can present and get enough votes from all sections of the country. So Peter Obi will be one of the people to be considered along that line, not necessarily because he is from the Southeast. Of course, he's not going to be the only one that is coming out of the Southeast. But just like I said, it's one of, one of the best, you know, that PDP can present, just like many other aspirants. I still am wondering um, the many other aspirants, because you have said um, succinctly that um, the People's Democratic Party uh, has lots of formidable, you know, aspirants or candidates who can fly, you know, the flag of the party, you know, when you finally, you know, decide uh, come May this year. You know, but from what we have seen so far and those who have indicated interest uh, so far, we have uh, likes of uh, Amenu Tambowal and the former um, uh, the, um, vice President Tiko Abubakar, but if the People's Democratic Party is going to tow the way down to the south, so far what we have seen or what we know, uh, Peter Obi, um, Anim Pius, and of course uh, the River State um, Governor. So, what more do we uh, hope to see playing out over time? You will see a lot of people coming out to aspire. It is an interesting game. And as it is now, for the mere fact that they are even obtaining form, is giving hope to, de to the delegates that come May 28, we will have the opportunity to choose among too many aspirants. So it's a good development. And uh, don't be surprised, even in the Southwest, some people are still going to, you know, collect this for, uh, nomination form. And simply because it is the game. Some people will want to be part of the meeting pre-meeting of aspirants to select the best. It is still a process. It is a system. So when you see people obtaining form, it does not mean or it does not indicate that they actually want to go into the contest. Obtaining a form may be an opportunity for you to meet, to sit down among aspirants, pre-discussion, or even trying to select a consensus candidate some people will want to be part of that process. And as a result of things for it is when we get to this, you know, to the field of May 28 that we know the number of aspirants that has come out and the delegates will now decide which of these aspirants are better or is the best to fly the flag of the party. <laughs> Well, uh, it, we, we totally understand all of the things that you're saying. We're saying that it's a good thing that the PDP has said that zoning is on the table. There's a zoning committee. And, we, you know, just like Nigerians are asking, would it not be a, a thing that the PDP should consider? Should it be, um, you know, left to negotiation? We understand that the PDP is a party. It has structures. And, of course, uh, it, it's an independent body. And so they're allowed to express their will and concern. But some people are thinking that this should be top priority. Zoning should not be an issue of uh, negotiation. And to which particular region should not be, you know, um, a thing where there should be some kind of delay. It would be, as a lot of persons have actually said, I mean, we're looking at political uh, pundits now saying that it would really be in the favor of the PDP if the zoning to the south is. But uh, you, you have constantly mentioned that. But um, just as we begin to close this conversation down, um, what should we expect moving forward now? Um, is there a possibility that, you know, the issue of zoning, that the committee would actually sit on it and it would favor, you know, uh, the southeast region to be very particular, not necessarily just the south, but do you think it would favor the southeast? Just like I said, if it's an hypothetical question, let us leave the whole thing for this committee to come up with something. And I want to tell you something again. Even if it is shown to the southeast, that does not mean that about 30, 40 aspirants can still not come out. Zoning to a local government, about 10 people will still come out. So that is the nature of aspiration. And that is the way of politicians. If you zone it to any region or to a, even to a local government, people will still come out to contest it. And according to the constitution of the party, a candidate can either emerge through consensus or through election, even if it is by consensus, we still go to that field to elect or make sure that we vote for that person. That's what the Constitution says. 
All right, Mr. Adira Odemi, I, in all of this right now, what's the position of the People's Democratic Party, you know, from all that we have seen? These are people that uh, have been um, there all, uh, all through the time, all over the years, you know, some of them who have um, gone to the APC and are now back to the PDP. So what's the party doing as regards, uh, you know, maybe injecting uh, or maybe pushing the, uh, the, the, the interest of the younger people and new blood forward, you know, ahead of 2023? Yeah, I appreciate that question. And that is exactly what PDP has addressed in its sales of forms. Um, you will agree with me that the party came up with a, uh, you know, with a kind of a formula that people or young people under 20, between 25 and 30, should pay 50 percent, or 20, uh, yeah, 50 percent of the nomination fee. That's to encourage the younger element, you know, into political positions. Not only that, women are even free; they are not even supposed to pay any money for nomination or you know for the form. So the, for the women, it is free. For the young element in the party, it is 50 percent payment. That's to tell you that we have a policy in PDP that encourages the youth and the women to participate. I'm talking about older people or men who have crossed from one political party to the other. It is going to be part of the consideration of the delegates. Well, somebody like me, we don't want somebody that will leave PDP today and go to APC tomorrow. And we are happy that the law is taking, even taking care of that with what is going on, you know, in a, you know with one of our governors who made it who left our party to join the APC. But the court is now saying no. And I think other people will learn from that. And the new electoral law has said something about that and has taken care of that aspect. So maybe there will be a modicum of respect for political parties in the EU you know, as we move forward. So is it just about reducing the cost of um, getting these nomination forms? At the end of the day, even if they do get the nomination form, would they be given you know, the opportunity, would they be given all the supports they need you know, to f actually you know, fly um, the party's flag? Would they actually be, for instance, uh, would, would the PDP ordinarily give um, a 35-year-old uh, who has not uh, been in the scheme of affairs for a while, you know, the opportunity to run, or, you know, to fly, you know, it's um, flag. And, but then again, so what else would it be doing to also make sure that um, they compete, you know, favorably or maybe even better than the APC? That is the unique aspect of PDP. That is what we promote. I can tell you in my own local government, we have a young guy of 27 year old who is in the House of Assembly. So it depends on even the individuals or the younger elements that is coming out for an election. They do the campaign, people listen to them, they look at their capability and you know they present, the way they present themselves. So that would be the winning formula. PDP as a political party does not have that power to say because you are underage or because you are, you are between 25 and 30, it is automatic. No. People or are people at the grassroots or the delegate, we still look at you and assess you as one of the bright elements, you know, that can be nurtured the PDP before they put you in office. All so right, uh, Mr. Dayemi. The movement of everybody. Let's quickly talk about the fact that you have uh, members of the PDP divided. We have some governors who are not very pleased uh, with the issue of zoning and uh, members of the National Assembly, I mean, talking about the zoning. Now, um, is this really good at a time where this is an opposition party, as we all know? Is this a good thing as you inch closer to 2023? That's the beauty of democracy. And we uh, don't how, how, democratic, you... how democratic would this be for the PDP? I mean, everyone is expecting that uh, it's, it's just natural expectation of an opposition party, you know, to be on top of their game. And if you begin to have uh, division, uh, in the party, there's no way it's not going to trickle down uh, ahead of the elections I, come 2023. I, 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 I understand that and I appreciate the question. What I'm saying in essence is there is time for everything. There is time to disagree and there is time to agree. If we are, if failure is staring us in the face like this, politicians will come together to say, yes, if this is what we make up to succeed, let us all come together. So it's normal if they disagree now. But before the election, we will come back to agree because we want to win together.
Mm, but because if you look at the time, uh, it doesn't look like, you know, the time is very near right now. And, and uh, so, uh, in, in politics, in politics, 24 hours is a long time. Anything can happen. We can dissolve among ourselves on that 10 minutes. It's just calling a meeting of everybody and, you know, presenting the situation. If you don't do this, you are going to fail. If you do this, you are going to win. So everybody, will, all the brains will be reset and we all come together. You, you have constantly talked about the plans of the People's Democratic Party to take over power uh, from the APC in 2023. How's that really going, you know, at the party level uh, across well, the 36 states of the Federation? It, 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 we are very optimistic. Well, optimism has are, never are, really we are, solved we are, any problem. We have strategized. <laughs> we have strategized. And I don't have to disclose that now. For the opponents, you know, I, I see. Start our campaign. Mm. All right, well, must say a very big thank you to you. We have been speaking about um, the issue of zoning and the People's Democratic Party, all of the issues uh, who will flag, uh, fly the party's flag uh, when they decide eventually uh, come uh, May 28. And we were joined by the former National Deputy Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Dion Odeemi. Many thanks for your time. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right. It is still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a, a breather right now. We'll come back and we'll be talking about a uh, World Cup qualifier in Nigeria and its long arch rival, as it were, Ghana, in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs> 